guys, Miss Kulkarni here. Welcome to my chemistry videos. All right, so this is something I promised when I made the video for dexamethasone. Dexamethasone, as you remember, this is a potential drug for COVID-19 and it showed pretty good promise. And we talked in the video about numbering for the steroid system. So in this video, we are going to focus on how the numbering system works for steroids. Let's begin. First of all, steroids are a very important class of medicines. What are steroids made up of? They have four fused rings. Did you see that's a core structure? This is ring A, ring B, ring C, and ring D. So we got four rings. Did you see one more difference? There are three rings which got six carbon atoms. Which are those? Those are A, B, and C. Each one got six carbon atoms. And there is only one ring which is made up of five carbon atoms. So D is the ring which is made up of five carbon atoms. So how many carbon atoms we got in all in this core structure? Those are 17. And of course, there'll be some branches and some other groups attached to that. But basically, every steroid must have these four rings and 17 carbon atoms. Now, when I said there could be other groups attached, look at that. We have normally some groups like methyl groups or OH or some other groups attached. It is still a steroid. Also, we will talk in a minute about these groups are shown in different conformation and they are called as alpha and beta. Look at this. This is cholesterol. You all must have heard about cholesterol. The main thing with cholesterol is it has got this long branch and we will talk about numbering for the branch also. So let's see how the hormones are important for our body. These are just few examples. There are more. Testosterone. This is a male hormone. Progesterone and estradiol. Both are female hormone. Again, they all have some basic structure. Four rings and of course different groups attached to that. And therefore, the numbering for all of them works the same. So let's get started to the basic numbering of the steroid system. We begin with the topmost point for ring A. So that is number one. And then we are going to keep on moving and go around ring A and B. So I'll keep on watching. This will be two, three, four. Are you watching me? Five, six. There you go. Eight. And this point of fusion is ten. So we covered ring A and B. Now you're going to move on to ring C. And ring C is 11, then goes to 12, 13, then goes to 14, 15, 16, and 17. Don't you remember I say there are 17 carbon atoms? So that's what general numbering is for any steroid core structure. And what about these methyl groups which we got here? These will be numbered after 17. So that will be 18 and this will be 19. So there you go. You got the numbering for the core structure of steroid. Let's look at the branch now. This is our cholesterol. Our job is to label the branch. We begin with 20 because 19 was our last number. So that is 20. Now. We want to make sure we cover everything attached to that branch before we move further. So this methyl group comes the next one, that is 21. We come back to the main branch, that is 22, 23, you got it, 24, this is 25, don't forget that. Then this one is 26 and that will be 27. 
So now you know cholesterol got 27 carbon atoms. Okay, now you got the numbering system. So let's go one more step deeper. Let's talk about alpha and beta configuration. And it's simple, guys. One simple hint, if your structure shows any groups appearing as if they are protruding out of the plane, either plane of the paper or plane of the computer monitor, then you can always mention those as beta configuration. And if you see anything which is appearing as if it's going deeper inside the plane of paper or plane of the computer monitor, that is going to be referred as alpha. So now you know how to number any steroid and you also know how to find alpha and beta configuration. So can you number and name any given steroid? Well, let's get started with this one. As you see, this one has this long branch attached. That means it must be a derivative of cholesterol. So we can begin with the parent name, which will be cholest. We also see there is a double bond. Now these derivatives may or may not have double bond at the same place and some groups could be different. So when I'm numbering and labeling, I'm going to make sure that I write down the double bond position. So it's beginning at phi. So I can say it's phi. It's a double bond. So what do we say? In, alkene. So I'll go with in. That talks about double bond present here. Then we also got two OH groups, hydroxyl groups, or we call them as alcohol groups. Which positions are those? Three and seven. Look at the orientation. 3 is a beta one. So I can say 3 beta. And for 7, it is alpha. And then we can say that is 2 groups. So di. And it is alcohol. So di all. So there you go. You got the name of the compound as cholest, phi in, 3 beta, 7 alpha, and di all. Let's try one more. This is the branch. So it is a cholesterol derivative. So let's get cholest. We got two OH groups, but now it's a different position. That's our numbering. So we got three beta and we got 11 alpha. And that is going to be di hydroxy or diol. You can do either one. Usually if it comes in the middle of the name, it's good to put hydroxy. But diol is also not wrong. And then the next thing which you're going to have is at position 6. We got a different group. Which group is that? That is the ketone. So that will be 6. Oh, it's a ketone. And you can also move this cholest word right over here. So this becomes cholestone. So what do you think? Now you know how to number any given steroid and also label alpha, beta and give the full name. There you go, guys. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.